So a popular approach from supervised learning is to have a high capacity neural network and then feed it with a lot of labeled data, right? And if you need high accuracy in your application, this data set not only has to be large, it has to be diverse. You have to co cover all the corner cases and uh, uh, get all the tail end of the distribution. And all these images have to be very well annotated. Of course, this adds to the cost. <clears throat> in this work, we ask question, can we use uh, simulated data, or can we use computer-generated data for training our machine learning models? Uh, the advantage is, uh, first of all, it's easier to create corner cases. We can do it at our desk. And second is we don't have to label them. But annotations are not really free here, right? Because the labels are part of the input parameters to the simulator. And uh, simulator can easily sample from a range of these parameters as long as the range is feasible. <clears throat> so here on the left, I'm showing you some synthetic images from Unity Ice simulator. And they look actually great, right? But when you compare them with the real images from laptop camera, there is an obvious distribution gap. So when you train using synthetic images or the simulated images, uh, the model may not generalize well on the real images. We propose a data-driven approach to bridge this distribution gap. In particular, we propose to learn a neural network uh, that operates on synthetic images and produces very realistic images. So in summary, uh, if you train your model with synthetic image, uh, sorry, real images and test it on the real images, uh, your performance will be good as long as uh, you have enough data and you have enough money. But if you train your uh, model with synthetic images, uh, although it's cheaper, but performance may not be good because of the distribution gap between synthetic and real images. We propose to refine these synthetic images so that they look real and then hopefully your performance will be better. But there are some key requirements. First of all, the real and the refined images should look similar, at least in distribution, right? Um, the second is that the annotation in the synthetic images should be preserved in the refined images, because we don't want to relabel the refined images. We want to use the labels that are present in the synthetic images that come out of the simulator. And third, we do not want to introduce any unrealistic artifacts in the refined images, because the neural networks can really overfit onto these unrealistic artifacts and may not generalize when tested on the real images. We call our approach SimGAN. And uh, here's the overview of the method. We have a simulator that generates synthetic images. And then we have a refiner network that's a fully convolutional neural network. Uh, it's, a, it's a resonant architecture in our experiments. And this outputs are refined images that look realistic. But of course, to learn this uh, noise distribution present in the real images, first of all, you have to have access to a set of real images. But the key point is that these real images need not be labeled. And we use an auxiliary discriminator function, which is a two-class classification network. So input to this uh, auxiliary discriminator network is an image. And output is a label 0 or 1, say 0 for real image, 1 for fake or the refined image. Uh, so the discriminator's job is to distinguish the real and the refined images as well as possible. Right? Um, well, the refiner's job here is to fool this discriminator into thinking that the refined images are the real images. And you can imagine if, the, if we have a very good discriminator that can always distinguish uh, the real images from the refined images, and if the refiner can fool this discriminator successfully, then essentially we would have generated images that would appear to have come from the real data distribution. But of course, we don't have this discriminator, right? We have to train this discriminator as we are training this uh, refiner network. So the training appears in alternating fashion. We update the refiner network, get some fake images, use them to, gen to update the discriminator network, and then use the discriminator network to update the refiner's parameter that tries to fool the discriminator. In addition, um, we do not want to change the image too much. We want to preserve the annotation information, the global geometry, the shape of the eyes, for example, in this case, uh, preserved, right? So we have an additional loss, which we call self-regularization loss, which minimizes the distance between the, uh, the synthetic image and the refined image. 
And this distance doesn't necessarily have to be an image space. It could be in any feature space. But in our experiment, we found it was sufficient uh, for the task uh, we are focusing on. Uh, we minimize the difference between the images. And of course, at entrance time, we have the simulator that generates as many synthetic images as you like. And then you just pass those images through the refiner network that keeps refining them and produces realistic images. And then you can train your model using those refined images. So we focus in this paper on two tasks. One is eye gaze estimation task, where the image, the input to the, uh, input to the uh, machine learning model is an image. And the, sorry, and the output is the, uh, the gaze direction, the direction where the person is looking at. The second task is hand pose estimation, where the input is the hand depth image, and the output is the joint location on the hand. So here, the top, I'm showing you some pairs of synthetic and the corresponding refined images using our framework. And the bottom is randomly uh, sampled real images. So as you can see, the, uh, the noise distribution in the refined images has been learned pretty well from the real images. So if you showed you pairs of synthetic and refined images, it'll be pretty easy for you to tell the difference because synthetic images look pretty smooth here, right? Versus if I showed you pairs of refined and real images, it'll be much harder task because the noise looks pretty same. And actually we went ahead and we uh, did a visual Turing test where we showed pairs of synthetic and real images to 10 subjects and pairs of refined and real images to the same 10 subjects. And uh, this is the performance. It was pretty easy with 81% accuracy for synthetic versus real. And uh, pretty hard, 51% is like almost like chance, right? When we showed pairs of uh, refined and real images. Similar experiments for hand pose estimation task using NYU hand depth image data set. So on the left, I'm showing images, uh, the synthetic images. And on the right, there are real images. And as you can see, there's, uh, uh, the edges are pretty noisy here on the real data set. And this noise distribution has been learned very well in the middle, where the, the, the output is from a refiner network. All right. So to really understand what training loss we are minimizing, let's denote the synthetic images with xi and um, corresponding refined images with r theta xi. Here, theta are the parameters of our refiner network. And let yi be randomly chosen uh, real images. So the discriminator loss is simple. Input to the discriminator is an image. If it is real, the output label is 0. If it is refined, the output label is 1. So it's a simple two-class. Uh, cross entropy loss, right? The refiner here tries to fool the discriminator, right? So the refiner tries to update its parameters such that when the refined image is input to the discriminator, the output, is, output label is zero, right? And you see the discriminator at the top tries to output label zero for the real images. So that's how the refiner tries to fool the uh, discriminator. We also have additional term which preserves the annotation so the overall loss looks like this. If you compare the first term of uh, the refiner network and the discriminator network, the only difference is the input to the discriminator. In the discriminator loss, it's a real image. And in the refiner loss, it's a refined image. And the second term of the refiner loss minimizes the distance between the, between the, uh, the synthetic image xi and the refined image r of xi. Of course, this difference doesn't have to be in image space. It could be in any other feature space. And of course, we update this. Uh, uh, parameters of R and D uh, in alternating fashion. So alternating training is actually a little bit unstable because the targets are moving. When you're updating the refiner parameter, the discriminator keeps changing, right? And when you're updating the discriminator parameter that uses the uh, fake images or the refined images, right? So, uh, and those fake images keep changing because the disk refiner is being updated. So this training is pretty unstable, actually, and it introduces a lot of artifacts. So we have two key in innovation where we uh, reduce these artifacts. First is we use local adversarial loss. So as I told, the refiner network is a fully convolutional network that makes local changes to the image. So our discriminator network also makes local, uh, um, uh, discriminates local patches of the image. And we have a fully convolutional discriminator here. And that helps a lot. So if you use global loss, where you have one label for an image, they, they, you can see some artifacts at the bottom uh, at the edges of the image. 
versus if you have local loss, um, the, the artifacts are significantly reduced. Second, we want to have a good discriminator, and the good discriminator should be able to discriminate all the uh, fake images or the refined image images generated uh, so far. So we have a buffer of refined images, and the mini batch for discriminator consists of the, the images from this buffer, as well as images from the current refiner network. I'm skipping a few details. Please come to a poster. Um, and let's move on to some um, uh, quantitative experiments. So remember, our goal was to start with not to just add realism, not to just make images look pretty, but improve the performance of the ML model. Right? So here we have a set of synthetic images. And we're using our framework, we have a set of refined images. So uh, we train a second network, in this case, for gaze estimation. right? And on these two sets of images, and we compare the performance. So the curve of the red, the red curve is the performance using the synthetic images. And the green curve is the performance using uh, the refined images. And the x-axis here is the angular distance between the predicted gaze direction and the ground truth gaze direction. And the y-axis is the percentage of images that fall within a particular error threshold. So I picked one particular error threshold. It's a seven degree error. And uh, you can see this when you train your gaze estimation here with refined images, the performance improvement is roughly 22% here, which is a lot. And you can think that we can really generate a lot of infinite, almost infinite amount of synthetic data, right? And then refine it by feed forwarding it, it through the refiner network. So the question here we ask is, can we outperform, outperform when we train with limited, and the, and the keyword is limited, amount of real data here? So here we have a comparison with a limited amount of real data in uh, yellow curve and uh, synthetic data, with, which is three times more than real data here, in red curve and refined uh, images, which is corresponding to the three times synthetic images in the green curve. The x-axis is, is the, the <clears throat> distance between the ground truth and the, the predicted uh, joint location, and the y-axis is the percentage of images that fall within a particular threshold. And here you compare, so you can see the, the, the performance improves a lot when you use the refined images, even, even compared to the real images. So in summary, our main contributions are we improve the utility of the simulated data for training machine learning model, and we quantitatively evaluate uh, the, the performance. We add realism to the simulator, as well as uh, preserve the annotation and reduce the artifacts. We do not require any correspondence between synthetic and uh, real images. This is in contrast to some image-to-image -image translation uh, work that can do a very good job of, say, uh, converting a black and white image into a real image. And of course, uh, we make local changes and local adversarial loss, and we use uh, uh, a history of images for updating the discriminator, and this helps in reducing the artifacts. We also have a blog at machinelearning.apple.com, uh, which is pretty easier to read. Um, I would encourage uh, all of you to check it out. Thank you.